Hello everyone, welcome to day 23rd of May Read Code Challenge and today's question is find the shortest super string. In this question, we are given an array of words and we need to return the smallest string that contains each string in this array as a substring. If there are multiple valid answers, you need to return the smallest one of them. Also, uh, we should assume that no words, no string in words is a substring of one another. So the substring cases are not there. Let's try and understand the question by an example. In this case, we are given three words, Alex loves lead code and the sh small shortest sub uh, super string that can be formed that contains all the th three strings as a substring is Alex le loves lead code, the concatenation of all the three strings. Although there could have been multiple answers there in any order, for example, loves Alex lead code lead code loves Alex, any permutation of these three strings is a valid answer. So let's talk about another example. We have words here, cat, g and multiple such scenarios. The output here is something that is mentioned here. If you can carefully observe that every word is taken care in this output string. This question is an extension of traveling salesman problem that involves dynamic programming as well. So for now, I am refraining myself from using that and providing a simpler approach so that you can also understand it since I have not done any uh, video with respect to traveling salesman problem. I hope you like today's session. So let's get started with the solution. Let me just take a pen find the shortest super string lead code 943 also guys it's a hard question so i hope i'll be able to explain my thoughts well here so let's talk about the list of words that were that are given to us uh, alex loves lead code what we are going to do we will st start creating new super strings starting from the word alex and then trying to find out the minimum shortest length super string for the remaining words and then again doing a merge operation to find the actual result. In this process, we will not only start from the Alex word, the zeroth index, we will try and loop across all the numbers that are there in our answer, in our question sets. For example, first at first we will start with Alex and loop across the remaining two arrays that we have loves and lead code. In the second iteration, uh, we will start from the word loves and for the word loves, what are the two remaining strings Alex and lead code. The third one states lead code, we'll start from lead code and try to find the minimum super string with the other two involved Alex and loves and once we have the complete answer set for all these three three possibilities we will extract the minimum one out and that will be our answer so i am what i am basically following is a brute force approach where i am trying to go through all the possibilities and arriving at a solution so the critical part here is how will i maintain which elements I have used in the past and which I am yet to use or available for usage. Also, there is a constraint that you can only use one string once. For example, Alex can be used once. You can't repeat it. Loves can be used once. You can't repeat it. So we have to maintain some state so that we get to know what all elements have been used in the past and what all elements are available. Let's think about the case where we have a graph like a scenario and we usually take a boolean visited variable that signifies that whether the string has been visited or not. But in this case, it won't work because we, we need to know with what possibility of the current string have the other been to use in the past. We can't go with the boolean visited array because with every recursion stack passing this boolean array has may get updated so you can't have a generic boolean array approach if with every recursion we create a new boolean visited array that will cause output limit exceeded hence we can't go with this approach instead we'll use bitwise manipulation 
to maintain a state variable that will actually tell us the complete state of our array what all words have been used in the past and what all are pending for usage how are we gonna do that we will to will enable all the bits up till the length of the input array to one we'll use a bitwise manipulation to do that for example there are three elements in the input data set will enable the first three bits of a number as a result of which we get 111 enabled at the zeroth index first index and second index the state of this number becomes 7 so if you make an integer out of it it will point to 7 also 1 means free 0 means occupied so let me let's ex understand these two examples in this case Sec Alex is available for usage, loves have been used, and lead code is again available for usage. In the last case, only Alex is available for usage, the other two are unavailable for usage and have been consumed in the past. So what all states does it correspond to? This corresponds to 4, this corresponds to 5, if you convert them into integer. How will we check whether a particular index add is enabled or not we will use this formula we will use a right shift operation to extract this bit and we'll do an and with one if that comes out to be one that means it is available for usage otherwise it's consumed how will we mark a bit consumed we will use a left shift operation so let's say this is two raised to bar i which is nothing but all the bits mark zero apart from the ith bit and what we are doing we are doing a negative of it so that will toggle the behavior everything will be marked one apart from the current index and we are doing a state of and that means the current ith index will be marked zero which signifies that the bit or the index has been consumed i hope these terminologies are clear to you and let's just move on to the coding part so that I am able to explain the logic better. The first thing that I did here is to create a map and the map signifies the starting string, the starting string along with the state of the variable, starting string plus state and the value here would be your shortest super string up till with the current string as a starting string. So this is the shortest super string. We are using a hash map in order to avoid recomputation of the same states done in the past. We have taken a variable state and we enabled all the bits in the state variable to one up till the length of words that was given to us and we passed it to a method shortest super string wherein we, the first argument is words the second one is the starting word the third one is the state and the fourth one is the map so follow assume this map as a memoization technique that we usually do in dynamic programming the first statement is very important if the state of a variable is marked as zero that means state has reached it, uh, the value zero that means all the words have been occupied and you there are no more words to actually process so will you will return whatever the start word is i'll explain this part later on let's just talk about the main logic the first string that i have declared is the shortest super string that will actually store the shortest super string and i iterated over the input array starting from the zeroth index going up till the length if the current index is not consumed and is available for usage that means I have to generate the super string starting with the ith index. So I recursively invoked uh, this method, passed in the words, in the input set of words, the starting string would become words of the ith index. I marked the ith index as consumed and updated my state variable and I passed map to it. I generated the super string out of it and once I have that super string, 
I tried finding the shortest overlapping super string using the start word and the the string that is returned by this method. So let's assume that uh, this will actually append A B C and B C D to A B C D. Consider this as the overlapping shortest string method. Let's assume it to be a black box. We'll talk about it later on. And once I have that appended string, I'll check whether it's lower than the previously calculated shortest super strings or not. If it is, I'll update the shortest super string variable. So I'm just checking a on the length, the append the new shortest super string or the old one. So whichever whose ever length is lower, I'll pick up that. and i'll put it back in the map now comes the logic for the key the key starts from the starting word whatever the start word is plus the state so we need to maintain the state as well so that we know what all elements have been consumed in the past if this if we find this key in the map then we'll simply return it and abort the process so that we can skip the recomputation again and now let's talk about the helper methods the first one being the consumed method so i talked about the consumed method we are using the right shift operation to find the ith bit and masking it with ending it with one if it happens to be true uh, that means uh, it is in the consumed state and you can't actually use it the next method in queue is a consumed method uh, you pass in the state variable and and it with the not of i left shift one left shift i so i explained this logic in the uh, slide show and whatever the new state is the updated state is we simply return it from the consume method so it's actually marking the ith state as i as 0 and ith index as 0 and updating the state variable now let's talk about the last helper method which is actually building the concatenation of two strings a and b for example a happens to be bake k happens to be kelt what will be the out output string b a kelt which is actually a concatenation or the overlapping sh shortest string of the two in two pa two strings passed to the method it's a straight forward method where i try to find out the best possible super string for the two input strings passed and uh, please go through it uh, it's just few corner cases that i try to manipulate here uh, i hope uh, this logic made sense to you guys and if you have any doubts or questions with respect to the algorithm that i have explained i'll be more than happy to answer those questions Uh, also if you like today's video please don't forget to like share and subscribe to the channel have a great day ahead